Balava Girivara Dari Ya Soranandana Braja Janaranjana Ya Soranandana Braja Janaranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Balava Girivara Dari Gopi Jana Balava Girivara Dari Nandana Braja Janaranjana Yasoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Rukmini Dwarkadish Rukmini Dwarkadish Rukmini Dwarkadish Rukmini Dwarkadish Jaya Rukmini Dwarkadish Rukmini Dwarkadish Rukmini Dwarkadish Rukmini Dwarkadish Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya Prabhupada. Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya Prabhupada. Jayam Vishnupad Paramahamsa Paravajakachari Asatrata Sri Srimad His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai His Kaan BBT Founder Charja His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Jayam Vishnupad Paramahamsa Paravajakachari Asatrata Sri Srimad His Divine Grace Srila Bhaktisaranta Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Ananti Kori Vashna Brinda Ki Jai Namachari Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Premsa Kaho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Sri Urvedi Gadar Har Siva Sri Govara Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Sri Sri Vara Krishna Gogo Pinashama Kunwari Kun Giri Govardhana Ki Jai Vrinda Vandama Ki Jai Sri Mayapur Navadik Dhamma Ki Jai Jagannath Puri Dhamma Ki Jai Nudvarka Dhamma Ki Jai Grantara Sri Mad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai Govara Premananda Haribo 
All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Sri Guru and Guranga Jai Srila Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So, reading Srimad Bhagavatam, the killing of the demon Agasura, Canto 10, Chapter 12, uh, Text 35, 36, and we'll chant together Text 37. So, I'll chant 35. Tad abhuta stotra suvadya gitika jayadi naikot sava mangala svanan sutvasvadam non atyaja agato chirad drisva mahishasya jagama vishmayam. Translation When Lord Brahma heard the wonderful ceremony going on near his planet, Accompanied by music and songs and sounds of Jai, Jai, he immediately came down to see the function. Upon seeing so much glorification of Lord Krishna, he was completely astonished. Purport. Here the word anti means near, indicating that even in the higher planetary system near Brahmaloka, like Maharloka, Janaloka, and Tapoloka, the festival of glorification of Lord Krishna was going on. Text 36. Rajan Agagaram Charma Shushkam Brindavane Dutam Rajao Kasham Bahu Titam Babu Bakrida Gavaram. Translation <clears throat> O King Pariksit, when the python shaped body of Agasura dried up into merely a big skin, it became a wonderful place for the inhabitants of Vrindavan to visit, and it remained so for a long, long time. So, text 37. Etat Kumar Rajan Karma Harer Atmahi Mokshanam Mrityo Paugandake Bala Drishvachur, Vishmita, Vrajay, Etat Kumara Jankarma, Harir Atmahi Mokshanam, Mrityo Paganda Bala, Drishvachur, Vishmita, Vrajay, <coughs> Etat Kumara Jam Karma Harir At Mahi Mokshanam Mrityo Pakanda Kembala Jisvachur Vishmita Vrajay Etat Kumara Jam Karma Hahir Atmahi Mokshayan Mrityo Panganda Ke Bala Drisvachur Vishmita Vrajay Etat Kumara Jam Karma Mrityo Panganda Ke Bala Drisvachur Vishmita Vrajay Eta Kumara Jan Karma Emma Mokshanam 
mrityo pokanda keval drist vochur vishmitavraje etat kumara jam karma hare atmahi moksana Etat Kumara Jam Karma Harir At Mahi Atunam Mrityo Pakanda Kair Bala Drisvachur Vishmita Vraje Etat Kumara Jam Karma Harir At Mahi Mokshanam Mrityo Poganda Ke Bala Drisvochur Vishmita Vraje Etat Kumar Jan Karma Hare Apahi Mokshanam Mrityo Poganda Ke Bala Matajis Eta Kumara Jam Karma Harir Atmahi Mokshanam Mrityo Pakanda Ke Bala Drisvachur Vishmita Vraje Eta Kumara Jam Karma Harir Atmahi Bokshanam Nityo Paganda Kevar Bala Drish Vochur Vimsmita Vraje Etat This incident of delivering both Agasura and Krishna's associates from death Kumara Jam Karma performed during their Kumara age, the age of five years. Hare of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Atma, the devotees are the Lord's heart and soul. Ahi Mokshanam. Their deliverance and the deliverance of the python. Mrityo, from the path of repeated birth and death. Pogandake, at the age of Poganda, beginning with the sixth year, one year later. Balaha. All the boys, Drisva Uchuhu, disclosed the fact after one year. Vishmitaha, as if it had happened on that very day. Vrajay, in Vrindavan. Translation, purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. This incident of Krishna saving himself and his associates from death and the, of giving deliverance to Agasura, who had assumed the form of a python, took place when Krishna was five years old. 
it was disclosed in Brajabhumi after one year as if it had taken place on that very day. Purport. The word mokshanam means liberation. <clears throat> for the associates of Krishna and for Krishna himself, there is no question about liberation. They are already liberated, being in the spiritual world. In the material world, there are birth, death, old age, and disease. But in the spiritual world, there are no such things because everything is eternal. As for the python, however, by the association of Krishna and his, and his devotees, Agasura also achieved the same facility of eternal life. Therefore, as indicated here by the word apmahi mokshanam, if the python Agasura could receive eternal association with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, what is to be said of those who are already associates of the Lord? Shakam vijaru krita punya punjaha. Bhagavatam 10, 12, 11. Here is proof that God is good for everyone, even when he kills someone. The one who is killed attains liberation. What then is to be said of those who are already in the association of the Lord? Om Ajnana Timidam Dasha Gananjana Shlaka Chakshu Umit Tamjina Tazmai Sri Guru Bhena Maha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhuni Chanananda Sir Vaiti Gadar Harsiva Sri Gaur Bhatta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So today is also the uh, appearance day of Gadadhar Pandit. So I have some reading material here that we'll read at the end of the class. So just not too much, just a little bit about who Gadadhar Pandit is in the, in the Panchatattva. So uh, we're speaking here this morning, and Prabhupada highlighted. Uh, the word mokshanam. Mokshanam means liberation. And this liberation, uh, I, I was just thinking about liberation and how important that is to everyone. Everyone is searching and looking for liberation. But when we read the Vedic literatures, we see that only one who has attained like proper knowledge can be liberated. And uh, this stage is called the Brahma Bhuta stage. And in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma, Nasochati Nakankshati, Samasavesha Bhuteshu, Mad Bhaktim Labhate <clears throat> Param. And there is described by Lord Krishna that one who is transcendentally situated at once realizes who he is, the Supreme Personality of God, the Supreme Brahman. And that particular individual never laments, never laments. And he never desires anything. And his, uh, what is it? He's equally disposed to all living entities. And in such a state of mind, uh, he achieves pure devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. So this is real liberation. And uh, we see that in the material world, uh, this is not even understood. The idea of liberation in the material world is just some hodgepodge idea, some mental speculation. So, real liberation means that when one understands that he's not God, and we can see in the material world, everyone is told that you're God. Uh, liberation almost also means that a person realizes how foolish they are to think that they're the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the third thing is that when one understands that he's a servant of the Supreme Lord, that is a liberated person. And then that person attains prasanatma. Prasanatma means joyful. They become happy. And everyone is searching for this happiness. But they're misdirected uh, in thinking that liberation means something in this material world, some adjustment in this material world. And they think that they are becoming liberated by that material adjustment. But at the same time, we should also know, and we shouldn't think, that this, this state of liberation is some like state or some, some trance. 
uh, you go into some particular trance and you uh, sit in some corner and you meditate and uh, in some like lotus position and you meditate and you're thinking yes I'm liberated you see sometimes there is that misconception I recall before I met the devotees I thought in that way I thought liberation meant doing some kind of meditative lotus position idea somewhere in the mountains and just meditate and what do you meditate on well according to the books that I read they told meditate on yourself because you're God and uh, you'll become happy so this is the misconception the misunderstanding and it's also the last snare of the material world I recall that before I met the devotee it's true because before I met the devotees I thought I was actually God that I was some kind of God but uh, due to lack of knowledge uh, I didn't realize that when nature calls on the body when you have to go to the bathroom you have to go to the bathroom you know so how can God be controlled by just some simple little thing like going to the bathroom and so what kind of God are we and a little virus came into our body or comes into our body and boom you're sick some little microscopic little germ enters this body and immediately we we get cold we get catch a cold so what kind of God can this be the lack of knowledge so that's why it says that uh, when one has attained proper knowledge then that person is liberated and what is that proper knowledge that proper knowledge is that we're not God we're actually servants of God this is the real understanding that we are the servants and how to maintain this liberation though this is also very important because once we become liberated then what do you do then we think well let's go to the mountains and just kind of focus ourselves at the trees and the sun we think that that's what liberation is but no in the Vedic literature is described that uh, the ongoing understanding of liberation means nisevaya it means service that's what liberation means that we serve we uh, serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead not ourselves but the Supreme Personality of Godhead and Krishna says Bhaktiyamam Abhijananti Yavan Yasyasmi Tapvatava <clears throat> that we should serve Krishna if we want to understand him as he is and in that kind of consciousness when, when one is in full consciousness of that devotional service then one enters into the kingdom of God and that's that's the whole sum and substance of Krishna consciousness we do so many things here um, I never really thought when I came to Krishna consciousness that I would be doing like some bookkeeping or something or you know washing dishes pots or I never even thought of that I, I thought that I'd be just in some kind of a trance and be happy or something but I never realized I never understood that that real uh, liberation is serving Krishna doing something with your senses and with your mind and with your body and that is called liberation and when you do that activity in full consciousness of Krishna then you go back to the kingdom of God that's that's really the purpose of life that's the essence of it so we see that there are so many misconceptions and misunderstandings about uh, this idea of liberation and in Krishna consciousness we're taught that the the more that you serve Krishna the more that you become dedicated to Krishna that that's the science the more that you want to do something and, and it's very understandable it's actually so practical because even in the material world if you're trying to develop a relationship and you ignore serving that person what kind of a relationship will you have there won't be a relationship unfortunately in the material world that's temporary it creates a lot of frustration but just as an example a crude example that if you don't serve someone 
then you cannot develop a real relationship with them. It's, it's, it's not real. It doesn't exist. So in the same way, in Krishna consciousness, if we want to maintain that liberated state, that state where we become freed from these sufferings and miseries of life, it means that we have to be constantly uh, pursuing uh, service to Krishna. And of course, you know, if we come in favor of Krishna, if, if, we, be, if we do things very nicely and Krishna is favoring us, I mean, how, what more could you possibly want? It's like a servant who is working for a king or serving the president of the United States of America. If you get the favor of Trump, President Trump, your position is pretty, pretty unique. You get a lot of, you know, you, you get a lot of uh, mercy from that. If you're uh, in his particular realm, in the, under his control, you, you can get a lot of benefits. Although, thank God he's not God. But, you know, the benefits that you receive from being under his favor are almost anything you want. Anything you could probably want, you can get because you're in his favor. And what to speak of the Supreme Personality of Godhead? We're being taught how to serve Krishna so that we can get the favor of Krishna. And if you get the favor of Krishna, then what is there that you would want that you cannot get? You can get whatever you want. There's a story of Dhruva Maharaj who went into the forest and performed severe austerities. And there was no satisfaction out of that austerity only until he saw the super soul. When he finally saw the super soul, then there was full satisfaction. Up to that point, it was simply austerity. It was sacrifice and austerity. But when Krishna appeared, uh, the super soul appeared and he saw the super soul, immediately he realized how stupid he was and what his desires were so minuscule that when he was told he can have a benediction, I, he's, I don't want anything. My, my desires are like broken glass. So I, I don't need anything anymore. I'm fully satisfied just seeing your form and wanting to serve you. And that's the essence. So here we are in Krishna consciousness. We have that same opportunity. We want liberation. Okay, you have it. There's liberation. Now, what do we do with it? We take it and we serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead who's giving it to us. He's giving us this liberation. But there's a requirement and that requirement is serving God. And this is what we should be doing. That's the only way we can understand Krishna, who he is. So if we're trying to figure out how not to do devotional service, if we're scheming and planning and thinking how I shouldn't do any service, then we're missing the point of what Krishna consciousness is about. We're missing the understanding of what service is about. And what we're exhibiting is an impersonal nature. The nature of impersonalism is such that, you know, you think you're liberated just like going into the mountains and meditating on yourself, thinking that you're God. So this impersonalism is very difficult to uh, eradicate, very difficult. Uh, in, in the course of reading Srila Prabhupada's uh, books, I can't even, I, I, I should try to count how many times Srila Prabhupada speaks about impersonalism. It's just, it's page after page after page, after purport after purport. He talks about this impersonalism. And, and this is what the nature of that impersonalism is, that we think we're God. And we may be a little God. You know, all you may want is just a little bit of sense gratification. Not a lot. You know, we don't ask, you don't want to be the, you know, king of the world. You just want a little bit, you want to be your own little God somewhere. A little bit of sense gratification, a little bit of control. And, and this is the nature of the living entity. But unfortunately, uh, this understanding is so uh, false. And so they try to have a liberation by uh, just some material adjustment. So there's so many adjustments going on. Just like we had, you know, just a political adjustment, a social adjustment, 
uh, so many adjustments that we make in our daily life. We just made an adjustment and got a new president. Now we want to make another adjustment. Let's get rid of him and get another person. This is a nature. Uh, hankering and lamentation. We just make constant adjustments. That's the nature of the living entity. Never satisfied, but we always want to relate to that material adjustment. We can never really learn. We don't seem to be able to learn how not to go towards that material adjustment. It's always like that. And even in Krishna consciousness, we do that, especially in the beginning in, in Krishna conscious life. You know, we're supposed to be prasanatma, joyful, you know, but why? it's hard to come to that point because we also want to make adjustments even in Krishna consciousness. Like, you know, when, when we first came to Krishna consciousness, we were thinking, well, why do we have to wear these clothes? Why can't we just wear, be cool and just wear something else? Or why do we have to call it Krishna consciousness? Why don't we just call it God consciousness? Why, you know, we always want to make so many adjustments and we don't really want to follow the instruction of the Acharya or the spiritual master. Instead, we want to figure out how we're going to, you know, make this adjustment. So this is our problem. This is the difficulty. And uh, we're making so many of these adjustments, but still we're never satisfied. No one's ever happy. Uh, no matter how many adjustments we make, never be satisfied. Because those adjustments are mental speculation or, or just plain maya. It's just maya. So here we're seeing that uh, liberation means that one should try to become the associate of the Supreme Lord. Uh, and if not, then it's durasayaya, durasaya ye bahir artha manina. So this, this bahir artha, this is really the crux. Uh, it's described that bahir means the external. And, and we want to actually surrender to the external. And artha means the interest. We, we have this external interest all the time and that ex external interest is this material energy we're so captivated by the material energy and durashaya our dream is impossible there's there's no possibility of being satisfied in this material world it's not possible and it's it's a will of the wisp it's it's hope against hope that will have some kind of satisfaction or happiness and it's not possible. And this is described so many times in the Vedic literatures or even by Srila Prabhupada. And there's a wonderful example in the Srimad Bhagavatam. That example is of like the bird in the cage. Uh, there's a little old lady, I believe, and she's like cleaning the cage. And then there's a dead bird in the cage. So she's misinterpreting there's the bird in the cage she doesn't take care of the bird and it dies but she's still taking care of the cage the external so the living entity the soul is encaged in this body this external manifestation of the illusory energy and we are always excited about the external cage for what reason I mean we're, we're so enamored by the the cage that we're entrapped in and we do everything for it if you walk outside after Mangalartic you hear cars going at breakneck speed I'm not sure if you hear that but if you go outside you can just hear the cars are swooshing by and everybody's going really fast and where are they going if you stop one of those cars and well, where are you going I'm going to work what do you think work for what I got a car payment man I, I got like a house I got a family I got children and you can see this is all external the external cage and we're so enraptured by it so engrossed by it that we do everything for it the minute there's a little bit of a problem you shovel all kinds of pills in your mouth you know, for whatever you got a headache pills if you got ache Hills. If you got, you know, it's, it, we're doing everything we can uh, in order to do something for this body. We nurture it, we baby it, we protect it. 
if somebody says something wrong about your body, you could fight them. You'll punch them. Somebody came by and said, man, you're ugly. That, that's like fighting words. You know, you'd, you'd get into a fist fight with them. It could be right in front of the deities and somebody could say, you know, you stink. It could be right in front of the deities and there could be an argument. That's how much we are so captured by this external body. And so if we're so captivated by this external manifestation, there's no opportunity for happiness. None. Durashaya. Not possible. Hope against hope. It doesn't matter who you are. You can be some very educated individual, big science, know everything. Even you can make an atomic bomb. Still, doesn't matter. Because they're in the wrong space. Saeva uh, Gokara is what the Bhagavatam suggested. Saeva Gokara. Go means cow and Gokara means ass. So no matter how educated one may be, as long as they're on this bodily platform of life, they're an ass. And so are we, if we maintain ourselves just on this bodily, this external energy. Now, these are very hard words, but this is the Bhagavatam speaking. This isn't like us saying, I mean, I didn't know anything about Gokara before I came to Krishna consciousness. It comes from the Bhagavatam. And this is what one is compared to if we're attracted and we function on this level of the external energy and if we're captivated, captivated by it. And there's no hope for liberation. There's none. There's no hope. So the Srimad Bhagavatam, it describes that uh, the only hope, of course, is to get the association of a pure devotee of the Lord. When you get the association of that pure devotee who's free from all vice, then we gain the affinity for hearing the messages of Vasudeva, of Krishna. And that is our only hope. That is the only way that we can get out of this material existence by that association. Because that association of that soul is in direct association with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That individual is liberated, as we just read here in the, in the purport, that those that are the associates of the Lord are liberated because they're in the spiritual world. They're not in this material world. So we had this great opportunity and still have it to associate uh, with such an individual as uh, Srila Prabhupada, His Divine Grace. He's from the spiritual world and his words that we, we read every day in the Srimad Bhagavatam, they come from the spiritual world. Prabhupada even said that I'm not writing these, these uh, purports, Krishna is. I'm simply just dictating. So th this is, that association is extremely beneficial and important for liberation, for getting out of this material existence and getting rid of this external uh, attachment that we have to this body, to this material world. And so we see that uh, these great souls, they come for a purpose, and that is to deliver the living entity. Atha, Bhum, Bir, Dvija, Shrestha. Twice born. This is what's important. The samskara has to be done. There has to be rebirth. There must be for purification. We must become purified. So you have your mother and father, your, your biological mother and father, and you thank them and try to deliver them. And that's one father and mother. Then we have a second. The second father is the guru. And the mother is the Vedic literatures, such as the Srimad Bhagavatam. You can see the Bhagavatam when we read it, how loving the Srimad Bhagavatam is. Like a mother, like a loving mother. And, and nurturing, it nurtures, the mother nurtures the child, loves the child. And the Srimad Bhagavatam, this is like the, the, the fruit, uh, the sweet fruit of Krishna consciousness. And the Srimad Bhagavatam is nothing greater 
than the Srimad Bhagavatam. And it gives us so much information and knowledge how to get out of this material world. And the father, the spiritual master, or the acharya, he delivers us. We're delivered by the spiritual master. He gives us this knowledge. One can never repay the guru for what he's done for us, what he's given us. He's given us this opportunity for liberation, for immortality. We're always thinking how to become immortal, how I want to live forever. And the, the guru, the spiritual master, comes and gives us the science, the understanding, connects us with the mother, the Vedic literatures. And you can imagine how important it is to go out and distribute these literatures. If we understand the potency of them and what these literatures represent and what they can do for a conditioned soul, each and every one of us would run out there and give one, give someone a book, give it to them and, and deliver them, give them an opportunity to uh, get out of this material existence. So, uh, in Krishna consciousness, we have to become Vasudeva Parayana. We must become a devotee of the Supreme Lord, a lover of Krishna. And we can become a lover of Krishna by reading the Srimad Bhagavatam and by the performance of this devotional service. And in that way, we can go back home, back to Godhead. Essential. We, we have to become a lover. That, that is really, that's the essence. We have to love Krishna. And the more that we serve him, the more that we'll love him. It's natural. The more that you serve someone in the material world, the more you love them. You begin to see their characteristics and you love that person. Yes, I'll do anything for them. People will give up their lives for people that they love. Some people are so mundane, they love their country and they'll die for their country. So what to speak of what we should be doing to love Krishna? We should be performing so many austerities and sacrifices to get Krishna's favor. To get his favor. If you get Krishna's favor, you can get anything you want in this lifetime. Whatever you want, whatever you've ever wanted in your life, you can acquire. If you just simply uh, get into the favor of Lord, of Shishi Rukmini Dwarkadish. Just get in their favor. Have faith. Serve them. You know, worship them more and more, not less and less. Then we just become like that so-called liberated person who's in the material world. They think, well, I'm liberated. So they just go in and just kind of like go into the mountains and kind of just mellow out. And that's not really what Krishna consciousness is. Krishna consciousness is service. That's how you maintain your liberation, by the service attitude. So uh, it's described that uh, Krishna is, is like the sun and Maya is like darkness. So the sun and, and darkness. So if we allow the sun of Krishna consciousness to rise within our hearts, it dissipates this darkness. Because you see when the sun comes up, boom, darkness is gone. Ignorance is gone. And what is that ignorance? It's lust, anger, greed, uh, hate all those things are in the heart and it dissipates if we allow the son of Krishna to rise within our hearts and that's really what Krishna consciousness is about to, to become purified to that particular point so uh, we need to get rid of these anarchas within the heart uh, I, I think there's a wonderful example Srila Papa gave he said that uh, just like a blacksmith a black, he, he, black or, or, or a goldsmith, I should say. They have a little hammer and they're ticking away. Tick, 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 tick. And they're making some kind of jewelry. Some unique little thing. And tick, 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 tick. For days, weeks, months. Tick, 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 tick. And they're trying to accomplish the little something. But then Papa said there's like the, the blacksmith's hammer. If you go to a blacksmith's shop. I don't know if there's anything that, like that anymore. But we know that the blacksmith's hammer... It's like a sledge and, and he hits it hard and he makes, you know, horseshoes or whatever. But that hammer, that hammer is very really powerful. So Papa says that we should take the hammer of Krishna consciousness and just smash material desires within the heart. 
I take that blacksmith hammer and just go wham, immediately eradicated by taking up the process of Krishna consciousness. And if we take that process properly, then we'll want to go out and give it to people. We'll want to, if we get rid of these anarchists within the heart, which is Krishna consciousness movement, then we'll want to go out and give everybody an opportunity to chant the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, Jai. We'll stop there and we'll talk something about Gadadhar Pandit. Very briefly, I'll try to go very quick. So today is the Holy Appearance Day of Gadadhar Pandit. So it says here that Gadadhar Pandit was a constant companion of Mahaprabhu from the time of their childhood. His father's name was Sri Madhava Mishra and his mother's name was Sri Ratnavati Devi. They lived very near the house of Sri Jagannath Mishra in Mayapur. Ratnavati Devi thought of Sri Sachi Devi or Sachi Devi as her own sister and always used to visit her. During their childhood, Sri Gorhari and Gadadhar would play together sometimes at Mahaprabhu's house and sometimes at Gadadhar's house. They both studied together at the same school. Gadadhar was a few years younger than Nimai. Nimai couldn't remain without Gadadhar even for a moment, and Gadadhar likewise couldn't stand to be separated from Nimai. In the Gor Ganadesh Deepika, it is described that that person who in Braja was the daughter of Sri Vishabhanu Raja, namely Srimati Radharani, is now celebrated as Sri Gadadhar Pandit. <clears throat> And then uh, Sri Vasu Ghosh Thakur wrote, quote, Lord Gorasundar, who is beyond the purview of the scriptures, beyond the entire Brahman, and above even the Vedas, can never be known by the atheist whose intelligence is dull. Lord Nichananda is his eternal self. Lord Chaitanya is Lord Govinda himself. And Pandit Gadadhar is none other than Sri Radha. The divine couple who are present in Sri Chaitanya are a well of rasa. Advaita Charya Sadaishava has prayed for his descent. Within he is blackish but of a golden hue without. The manifestation of the divine couple. Thus Vasudev goes sings of the beauty of this divine couple, Sri Gor Gadadhar, and whose worship has been completely subjugated, he prays that he will desire to serve them birth after birth. couple more paragraphs. The emotions and expressions of Pada, uh, Pandit Gadadhar are not possible to describe. Another name of Lord Garanga is the Lord of the life of Gadadhar. Who can understand what mercy has been bestowed upon him? Their glories are sung by everyone as Gadai Goranga. <clears throat> Gadadhar was from his very childhood very serene, patient, calm, quiet, fond of solitude and very renounced. Nimai Pandit during the time of his youth would ask his fellow students meaningless, fallacious uh, questions in logic. Gadad, however, was not especially fond of this pastime and therefore he sometimes used to remain at some distance from Nimai. But Nimai wouldn't allow him to get away. He would tell him, Gadadhar, in a very short time I'll become such a Vaishnava that Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva themselves will come to my door. Sri Gadadhar Pandit was very affectionate towards Mukunda Dat. Whenever, whenever any Vaishnava came to Navadweep, Mukunda would inform Gadadhar and they would both go to have darshan. One time Pundarik Vijayanidhi came from Chattagram to Navadweep and Mukunda invited Gadadhar to come along and meet him. Gadadhar was very excited to meet such a Vaishnav and thus the two of them happily set out together to take advantage of Sadhu Sangha with the famous Pundarik Vijanidhi. Just a little bit more. However, when Gadadhar saw that Pundarik Vijanidhi dressed and acted like a wealthy materialist, he lost whatever reverence he had previously felt even before speaking with him. Gadadhar thought to himself, how can a Vaishnava look and act as if he was addicted to sense enjoyment? However, Mukunda knew the real character of Pundarik Vijaniti and he could also sense the doubts in the mind of Gadadhar Pandit. 
Thus he recited some shlokas from the Bhagavatam in a very sweet voice. When Pundarik Vidyanidhi heard his beautiful recitation of these shlokas, in a fit of ecstasy he began to cry while calling, Krishna, Krishna, and finally fainted dead away on the floor. Gadadhar now felt very remorseful in his mind. He thought to himself, because I have ignorantly considered this holy, highly advanced soul to be an ordinary materialist, what an offense I have committed. In order that I might be saved from the reaction of this offense, I think the only solution is to accept initiation from him. Gadadhar Pandit submitted his proposal to Mukunda, who presented it to Pundarik Vijaniti with a full account of the Pandit's high qualifications. Hearing this proposal, Pundarik became very happy. Providence has bestowed upon me a great jewel. Certainly I will accept him. You shouldn't have any doubt about that. It is a result of many lifetimes of good fortune that one gets a disciple like this. So there's other things, but at least that's a little something to hear. Gidadhar Pandit Ki Jai, Sira Prabhupada Ki Jai.